Good morning. Thank you, Stein, for introducing this contract and the presentation about it. You can see from the acronym, we have a double change, not only the number change from 94, but also the first part, Copernicus Joint Services, so get used to it, and signaling, signaling better integration between C3S and comes as a long-term goal. I have another comment on the title. You see here the long title of this contract, which we have reworded a bit, enhancing comes intelligence for its users, because in some languages, like in German, user intelligence has a misunderstandable meaning. It's talking about brain capabilities only and not about market research, because the, this meaning does not exist. So we want to avoid misunderstandings here. So now, now about what we do and who we are. This is the team with DLR, Nilo, now transfer from Travalor to Admission One in France and Cirque, and the people are sitting here in the second row. So this is a well-experienced collaboration over, I think, more than a decade. We have complementary expertise, so each one of the team members is crucial to cover all the right portfolio of comes. And what we do, in close interaction, of course, with ECMWF colleagues and all the pieces of comes and with all the contractors delivering services. Um, our purpose, our objective is to support ECMWF in the relationship with the user communities with the ultimate goal to ensure the best possible use of the products by users so that they are fully satisfied. So we want to understand existing and new users, their motivations, their working practices and their value chains. So what role does comes or can comes play? What other elements are crucial to meeting their demands? And this all is embedded then in the societal trends and in the policies that are driving many of the core users in the activities. So to help enlarge the user base and the usage of comes. Um, in the predecessor contracts, comes 94 till last September. We have mainly focused on collecting user requirements and translating them into specifications. Do ranking, identify the dominant and top ranking, similar user requirements, analyzing also changes in the service portfolio linked to user requirements to document that comes is really driven in its evolution to a significant extent by user feedback. And we also had the task to organize user workshops with um, intensive discussions during a day and also to collect the user statistics. All of this will continue, but it will evolve in this new contract that started in February. Um, just to um, summarize the status or the history of user workshops. They go back to the predecessor projects on ESA and um, FP7 side starting in 2008. We have achieved quite good coverage together with the policy user workshops and the user days at the assemblies of most countries of EU27, not all. Um, and this is one starting point when we think about where can we go for the next user workshop. So the, the central element for digesting all this information still is this user requirements database, where we have a traceable collection and also the analysis outputs of our um, analysis of a user requirement in terms of traceability, impact, and um, potential, potential impact and needed effort to implement it. And we provide this then to ECMWF in interaction with the EC, the user forum, to take priority decisions to decide about the service evolution. And in, in the new contract, um, one additional element with these user workshops, I will talk about them a bit more, um, we will also collect not only user requirements, but other type of feedback from users and try to bring this in into our input to ECMWF. So, in, a, in one way, it's largely, again, a continuation of the concept of COMS 94, but we have a few evolutions, changes, also in the mindset. So, first one is 
the status information of this growing database of user requirements needs to be updated regularly because comes is changing, evolving, and we need to um, take stock of this. Um, then also the service portfolio document, um, there we have an interaction due with Richard Engelen mostly to make sure we get really the last updated version in our database and can reference our user requirements then to them. And then the most important part, the user interaction format, we want to intensify the dialogue. And what we do here is that we extend those user workshops into user interaction sessions as prescribed by the ITT. And we fully stand behind this because we have seen that one day gathering with some preparation to identify the speakers is not enough to really sustain the user interaction. So we will have in preparation of a user workshop, which will remain as an element of such a user interaction session, a preparatory phase of dialogue with our national co-organizers, and then of taking either a small sample of interviews with selected core users, or taking a survey with a somewhat larger group of users, not, not too big, not on numbers, but on content we are um, out. And typically this will be covering a couple of months to make sure that we get some in-depth analysis and understanding already when we meet for the user workshop. And then we discuss with an open invitation to the community in this country and see to develop the understanding on our side, so comes intelligence for its users, but also to help the users understand better how different types of users may have to collaborate to fulfill a value chain, um, this kind of aspects. And one important outcome of this activity will then to feed into the national collaboration program to identify possible activities that can be implemented or to help the country together with ECMWF identify candidate activities for the NCP. Yeah, and also I showed this map of the user workshops, so European coverage is nice, but we want to also approach this a bit more strategically. So we have put these criteria and agreed with ECMWF on them, starting from commitment. We have had cases when the national co-organizers were less um, full of motivation to run a user workshop with us, and this was then, of course, a tedious process. Right now, we are in the first user interaction session with Bulgaria and our co-organizers from the MET service and from a national Copernicus user platform are highly motivated, very actively contributing. So this is a very starting, very good starting point. We'll embark on the discussions for the next one, preparing the next one with Denmark next week. So that's the, the sequence that we are in. Yes, of course, geographical coverage, different levels of maturity, potential to discuss new application domains. These are also aspects that we take into consideration. And again, the link with the NCP. Um, then about user statistics. So my contract, I have been bothering some of you collecting input for presenting this integrated user statistics. So that the temporal evolution of active users from quarter to quarter of total registered users for the different service lines. Now with ADS, of course, there's more integration, but it's not fully achieved yet. Um, and also the country breakdown and the breakdown, a very simple breakdown into different um, user categories. So public, private, individual, academic. Um, and here we are all charged you have seen this slide in Vincent Henri's introduction yesterday already. We are all charged with the task, the expectation from the European Commission to get more detail on the user characterization. So we have this um, KPI, so this criteria, affiliation, them thematic activity, sector of activity, country we have. Um, and we. this means, on my side, we have to collect this kind of information, but the other side has to provide it. So all the interfaces, the ADS and the other decentral remaining interfaces, need to enhance their collection of these characteristics so that we can collect them. So this will be a process to set this up and to optimize this. And yeah, we, are, we will be in touch on this. Um, 
yeah, then in this work package three that has in the past only dealt with user statistics, this is now the user intelligence uh, work package that is meant to integrate everything. So here we will integrate the user requirements, the user statistics, but also um, all the elements which are not grasped in technical requirements, but in discussion with the users about their value chains. What are the barriers? Why do not every possible user use comes? Um, what are the additional inputs or the orchestration needs between different users to really set up a full um, value chain? And this kind of feedback together with um, the zoo of portals that is out there, data connectivity as a topic, we will try to collect and grasp all this feedback and hand this over in a report in this work package. And two tools that we have here in this new round of this contract, we are working with in the interviews and in this analysis with generic use case templates, so where we have a standard set of questions. I mentioned some like barriers, like other input needed, expertise gaps, whatever. And then also here a generic presentation of a value chain with all you can think of, the comes part, the downstream part, national to local, but also the um, need for possible additional intermediate users, researchers, platforms, big data manipulators that we want to look into. And for each use case, we will um, adapt this to a specific um, value chain as an easy way of trying to, to grasp and discuss all elements. So in conclusion, yes, we do continue. This is the first task for all of us, collecting user requirements, doing this user interaction sessions, and help comes define the service evolution with new elements like this more intensified dialogue with the users, with interviews and, and longer interaction sessions trying to understand not only the technical requirements, but the, the drivers, the motivations, and the limitations behind in the life of a user, in their working practices. And together with those of you involved in st user statistics, optimizing what we can provide um, for comes on statistics. This is all I have for today. And thank you, and thank my team. Thank you, Thomas. Um, are there questions for Thomas? No? Okay. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yes, uh, this is not a question, it's rather a comment again to point out that um, we have, we ask similar things from all. Uh, all contracts we run with different entities, so this means for us it's interesting that this stuff is Basically, you can uh, aggregate that in a meaningful way. So this means that some of these underlying assumptions you do to, for categorization, for classification, and so on, need to be consistent. No? So a uh, very basic question is, uh, how do you count users? And also there are a number of questions directly associated with that. Um, and um, that, that simply needs to be treated in a consistent way, no? So that's uh, not an issue, it's just something we need to, we need to take care of. Not forget that. So, so the EC has defined KPIs, which yeah. give these different possible responses to the classification. So we will stick with this. We may filter a bit what is not applicable for some of our um, collecting of information. But for instance, how long do you count a user? No? Is a user, if he was there five years ago, how long do you keep on counting this guy as a user? No? These type of things as well should be <laughs> considered, otherwise you end up in figures that are not comparable. I'm, I think that we will need a kind of re-registration to get this information from the, all the already registered users, otherwise we will not have it. And this will introduce an inconsistency. These ever-growing graphs will have a, possibly some users will drop out. Yeah, and I think we need a coordination amongst uh, different interested entities to, to make it happen. Yeah, that's why the uh, active user is probably the, the most relevant one, because in a quarter, uh, it's easy to, well, it's easy. 
it's possible technically to, to know what's do, uh, what we are doing, but after five years, probably somebody has registered two or three times through different elements, so the, the, yeah, the figures uh, get... Uh, and yes, if, if somebody accessed data 10 years ago, how meaningful it is for the service. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's an important question and uh, some work for the future. <laughs>